There are lots of very simple and very accurate methods that you can use to find out where, you know, exactly where you are on a map. But for virtually all of these methods, you need to be able to look around and see the surrounding countryside. But what happens if you're, you know, you don't know where you are on a map and you're out at night or in thick fog or any other form of reduced visibility and you can't actually see any other features? How do you find out where you are on a map? Now, most of the time, you'll know very approximately where you are you know, on the map. As an example, today I know that I'm somewhere here on this map, but I'm not exactly sure where. Now, it's not a problem because I can use the direction of the hillside that I'm stood on, you know, to find out where I am on the map. If you look at the side of any hill, the slope will have two main geographic characteristics. Is that a good way of putting it? You know, how steep it is and which direction it's going. Now, the steepness can be explained in degrees as a percentage or a ratio. And you, know, you can use your compass really easily to check the, the steepness of any slope. The direction of a hillside is called its aspect from the Latin aspectus, which just means you know, to look at or looking at. So if a slope was going north, then it would be looking at the north. So it's got a north aspect. If it was, if the slope was going south, then it would have a south aspect, okay? So let's go through how we actually use the aspect of a slope to find out where we are on a map. The first thing we need to do really is we need to know which way is directly down. So <laughs> I've got this ball. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this ball down the hill um, and let's see which way it goes. Here we go. So... <laughs> it didn't work. The grass is too long. Hang on. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I carried this ball all the way up this mountain just for that shot on this video and it didn't work. <laughs> anyway, so we shan't be using this ball. Never mind. Now, <laughs> so... <laughs> We'll do that one again. So let's imagine that, I, <laughs> that the ball worked. Let's imagine that I'm going to roll a ball directly down this slope. Which way do you think it, do you think it would go <laughs> if it had worked? So I would say that that direction is directly down from my location here. Okay, so that line is called the fall line. And most hillsides, the fall, the fall line isn't regular, you know, it, it changes, it goes off in different directions. You know, so sometimes down will be that way and then it will turn that way. So the fall line isn't regular. Now, contour lines go directly across the slope. They stay at the same height. Okay, now, this is very important because if you remember the way the ball should have rolled, <laughs> if it had worked, and the contour line goes straight across, where they meet the, the, the fall line and the contour line, it forms a right angle. And we can use that right angle to find out where we are on a map, which don't forget, it's the fall line, the direction that is immediately down from your location, and the contour lines, which go across the slope. Okay, so that right angle is what we're going to use. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use our compass to find out the direction of the fall line. Which direction is the slope going or which direction is its aspect? Oh, when you're doing this, by the way, don't point your compass down the slope as this will stop the needle rotating. Try and keep it reasonably flat. In this case, the bearing is very approximately west. Okay, so I know that I'm on a slope with an almost west aspect. That way is west. Now, to start with, I could have been anywhere on the map you know, I didn't know where I was, but now I know that I'm on a slope which is facing west. So I know that I'm not on any slope that is facing in any other direction, north, south, east, or whatever. So I can ignore all of those directions and all of those slopes on a hill, on, on the map, sorry, because I know that I'm not there. In fact, if you look at the map, there are only four slopes with a west aspect. So I must be on one of those slopes. Now, Let's make this a little bit more accurate. My compass bearing down the fall line is 245 degrees. Don't forget that's a magnetic bearing, 
So you may need to adjust your compass for your local declination before you use that on a map. In this area, the declination is only 16 minutes west. So that's just over a quarter of a degree. So I won't be adjusting my compass. Now, do you remember I said that we could use the right angle between the contour line and the fall line? Okay, so this is where we're going to use it. Now, as I said, my compass bearing is 245 degrees straight down the slope. So if I point my compass down the slope, at, or if I point my compass at 245 degrees, the direction of travel would be directly down the slope. Okay, so I place my compass on a map, and so the, move it so the orienting lines are pointing straight up the map, northwards, you know, like we normally do. Then I look for anywhere that the edge of my compass crosses the contour line at a right angle. As I said, there are only four slopes, you know, which I could be on because they, they've got a westerly aspect, they've got a west aspect. And if for some strange reason I was doing this in good visibility, you know, the map would tell me that if I was here, there would be a flat area just below me with the ground rising up after it. If I was here, there would be a stream below me and the ground would rise steeply after the stream on the other side of the stream. If I was here, the ground would gradually flatten to a large flat area about 500 meters from where I am. And if I was here, there would be a wall corner with a wood or some trees, you know, just behind it, about 330 meters from where, where I am. So in good visibility, I would know exactly which slope I was on. You know, but let's keep this in the real world. You know, I'm making this video in good conditions, as you can see, but this is just to show you the technique. You know, there really are lots of simpler and more accurate methods of finding your location, you know, in good visibility. So, you know, normally slope aspect location is, it's only used when you have no other choice. You know, as the visibility is too bad, you just can't see anything around you. You can't take a bearing of something or, use the military decraps method or anything else. So bear in mind, I'm doing it in a nice clear day today, but you would normally do this when the weather wasn't like this, you know, bad visibility, you can't see anything. So, um, you know, <laughs> let's have a look how we use slope aspect in the dark. Now, you may be lucky. Let's say that the fall line in front of you, you know, the direction of the slope was directly due north. Now, if you look at the map, you'll see there is only one regular slope with a north aspect. And as you can see, it's, it's only a maximum of 35 meters from top to bottom. So it'd be very simple to confirm you know, that that's where you are. But we're, you know, normally we're not that lucky. So let's say that we know that we're on one of those four slopes that I mentioned earlier on, uh, but we don't actually know which one. And the trick here, as with most, most navigation techniques, which is one of the things that the vast majority of people when they go out walking very rarely do, you'll need to look at your map closely and in detail. If you look at the map really closely, you'll see that two of the slopes I could be on are actually the sides of small ring, ring contours. So they're just very tiny little hills, you know, which would be very easy to identify. Another of the slopes I could be on, the aspect changes from being just less than west to almost northeast, you know, very quickly. And on another slope that I could be on, the, the aspect virtually doesn't change for around 300 meters. So I'm going to walk along without gaining or losing any height. I'm going to try and follow the contour line for about 100 meters in that direction and see if the aspect changes direction. Oh, just one thing, in reduced visibility conditions or, you know, in the dark, you can use timing or pacing to check how far you've walked. So I've just walked 100 meters and there was no dramatic change in direction of the contour line. I, I didn't lose it or gain any height. Well, I hope I didn't. Um, so I'm looking, I'm going to look at the map again. And I think because there was no change in the uh, direction of the contour line, I think I was at, I'll, I'll put it onto your screen. I think I was at this point here when I took my 245 bearing. Okay, the contour line has actually changed slightly, so I'm going to check it. And looking at the map, it should be, let's have a look, change this. So it's changed by about five degrees. Let's just check that. 
That is 240 degrees straight down the slope. So the fall line here is 240 degrees. Now, this is all well and good, but it doesn't tell me where I am. You know, <laughs> all it tells me is that I'm on a two, 240 uh, fall line and I'm somewhere on the side of a hill. So I need to find my exact location. Um, so what I'm going to do is, if you look, I'll drop the map onto your screen and you can have a look at it. Just above the, this slope, the, uh, the ground flattens out where it says 375 at the 375 contour line. It flattens out into a large flat circular area. So I'm going to change my bearing. It's on 240 at the moment. So I'm actually going to walk in exactly the opposite direction. So I'm going to 240 minus 180. So I'm going to set my compass at 60 degrees and I'm going to walk uphill until the ground flattens out. Now, even at night, anybody can tell if you're walking uphill, downhill, or it's flat. So at night time, what you may, may do in this situation is what I'm going to do. Walk up the hill until you stop going up. <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that, until it flattens out. And then you'll know that you're at the junction of the 375 contour line and the um, 60 degree bearing, or you know the 244 line. Okay, sounds a bit complicated. You might have to replay that bit a few times. But literally all I'm going to do is I'm going to walk uphill in a straight line until the ground flattens out. Once it flattens out, I'll know exactly where I am on the map. So let's give it a go. So this is it. This is where the ground flattens off. There's a slope behind me. So I'll drop this onto your map. I now know exactly where I am just by using the direction that the slope is falling away behind me. Um, that's it for today really. There are so many different scenarios that I could go into. You know, you're on a easterly facing scree slope that is, you know, covered in boulders or what. If I went through all the scenarios then this video would last for months. In the real world all you need to be able to do, point your compass down the slope, take a bearing look at your map, you know the sort of general area that you're in, anywhere where that bearing crosses the contour line at a right angle, you may be there. Anywhere it doesn't, which will be 99% of your map, you're definitely not there. You see what I'm getting? So it's a matter of homing down on where you actually may be. Now, if there are any terrain features, say I was on the slope, even in the dark, I was walking up, I knew I was coming up the slope and there was a wall junction right here. I wouldn't need to start looking for flat areas or whatever. That would make it easy. But once again, in the real world, when you're lost, or sorry, not lost, can't say the word lost, can I? When you're navigationally challenged, <laughs> um, things start to build up in your mind, um, you know, doom and gloom. Stick to looking, you know, looking at the slope, stick to the really basic stuff. Look at the direction of the slope where it crosses your a, com you know, a contour line on your map. That's where you are. Just one last important point. This particular navigation technique does need some practice, you know, before you can do it in bad weather or when you really need to use it. So it's best to go through it a few times in the daylight, you know, in good conditions like today until you have the confidence that you can use it, you know, when it's really needed. Okay, thanks for watching.